Welcome back to Discovering Geometry with Mrs. Berry. This is lesson 39. Today we will be going over more circles and proving circle conjectures. We're going to do these circle conjectures using the inscribed angles conjecture, which we learned in our previous lesson. We will also have an algebra review where we calculate the coordinates of a circumcenter in a triangle. So in our previous lesson, we discussed the inscribed angle conjecture, which can lead us to other logical conjectures. In this lesson, we'll prove the inscribed angle conjecture. There are three cases that we can look at when proving this conjecture. Can you identify the differences in these cases? In case one, the angle goes through the center of the circle. In case two, the center is outside the angle. And in case three, the center is inside the angle. We will look at all of these differently to prove them. So there are case one conjecture. The measure of an inscribed angle in a circle equals half the measure of the arc when a side of the angle passes through the center of the circle. So here we have a picture of the circle O with an inscribed angle MDR on diameter DR. We want to prove that the measure of MDR is half of the arc MR. So let's think about um, how we could do that. This picture gives us a little bit of a clue. We're going to make a triangle here by connecting the center O with the end of the angle M. And then for convenience, we've labeled some of these angles so that we can talk about them differently. Um, MDR is labeled as X. And we have MOR is labeled as Y, and then DMO is labeled as Z. So if we're looking at what we want to prove, MDR is labeled as X. So we want X to be half of the arc. We can also use the fact that we know that the arc is going to be the same measure as Y that angle Y because that is our central angle. So instead of the one half of the arc, we could say that it's one half of Y. This is what we want to prove and I'm just going backwards. Remember that we said that proofs are easier if you go backwards and try to prove each point as you go along. Then when you write the proof, you'll go from the beginning. If we want X to be half of Y, we could rearrange this algebraically, multiply both sides by two, and say that we want two X's to be one Y. Now let's look at our triangle and see if we can figure out how we can get two X's to be Y. Well, it would be nice if X and Z were the same. Um, are they? MO is going to be a radius of the triangle and DO will be a radius of the triangle. So that would be an isosceles triangle. Because MO is equal or congruent to DO because they're both radius. They are both a radius, they are both radii of the circle. So we know that these are congruent. That means that we know that X and Z would be congruent. Um, because it would be an isosceles triangle and the base angles would be the same.
So if X and Z are the same, could we just say, oh, how do we get X and Z is equal to Y? Um, let's think about our triangle and our interior angles and our exterior angle. So if all three of the interior angles add up to 180, and then this unnamed angle right here with Y adds up to 180, then that led us to the exterior angle Y being equal to the sum of X and Z. So X plus Z is equal to Y, and that's from the exterior angle conjecture of a triangle. So then could we say that two X's would be X plus X equals Y, um, and now we can substitute the X plus Z equals Y. We know that Z is equal to X, so we could say that X plus X equals Y, because x and z are equal. And so then that leads us right to here. So really, we could start up here as our starting point, and we're going to go down this and then over and back to here. Your paragraph proof or your flowchart proof might look something like this. So here was our reasoning. Let's go to a clean sheet and we'll write a flow chart proof. So we started with DO is congruent to OM or MO, and that's because they are both radii of circle O and then from there we could say that triangle D O M is isosceles And that would be the definition of an isosceles triangle. So this one flows to this one because we had to prove that these legs were congruent before we could say that that was a isosceles triangle. From there, we could say that X is equal to Z. And that's because of the base angles of an isosceles triangle. So the isosceles triangle conjecture about base angles. Um, we also then needed to say that X and Z were added together to make Y. So X plus Z is equal to Y. And that is because of the exterior angle theorem or conjecture of that triangle. And when you have both of those, then we can go to this one box that we could say that x plus x equals y. So 2x equals y. And then when we divide both sides by 2, we could say that x equals 1 half y. So the x plus x equals y is from substitution. And then we combine like terms. And then we divide. So this is all just algebra operations. From all of that, then we can go to the measure of angle MDR, which was X, is equal to half of MR 
And that's just all by substituting what we started with. Now for case two. This time, the center of the circle is outside of the angle. So we are given this, this circle, circle O, and we have inscri inscribed angle MDR on one side of the diameter DR. We want to prove that this angle is half of the arc measurement. So on our circle, we have some different labels to help us explain. So Z is equal to the measure of MDR. And X is the measure of MDK. And we're going to use W for the measure of RDK. And then we can say that um, X plus Z is equal to W based on what we've just said, and that's just angle addition. So then we're going to talk about the arcs. We're going to label the arc MR as A, and we'll label the arc MK as B. So then the arc KR is equal to A plus B. So we want to know, in terms of what we have listed here, that the measure of MDK, which is X, um, is half of MK, which is the arc B. From our first case, we know that W is equal to A plus B over 2. Remember, our first case included going through the center. So if we use that, that would be W is equal to half of A plus B. So that was from our first case. W is equal to half of A plus B. Since we just proved it, we can use that again. We can substitute in, or we can say that we know that Z is half of A. Because that would just be a smaller, Z right here is half of A. That would just be a smaller case one. So if you, if you look at it, it's still the same from our first case, um, it's just a smaller angle. If we wanted to get X by itself right here, we could set, we could subtract Z on both sides. So X is equal to W minus Z. We can substitute in this one half A plus B for the W and the one half A for the Z. So we're taking this X equals W. We're gonna substitute in W as one half A plus B. And we're gonna substitute in Z as one half A. If we distribute this one half, we have one half A plus one half B minus one half of A. And so one half A minus a half an A, those cancel. And so we are left with X equals one half of B. X is the angle that we need, the MDK angle, and B is the arc that we need. You will prove case three in your homework. So let's look at an example that could be another problem from your homework. Determine whether each conjecture is true or false. If it's true, prove it. But if it's false, provide a counterexample. Um, in your homework, you may choose to do your proof in any way, a paragraph proof, a flowchart proof, or even a columns proof. 
So here we have a parallelogram inscribed within a circle. If that parallelogram is inscribed in the circle, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Is that true or false? Well, let's think about how the opposite angles in a parallelogram are always congruent. Right, that's one from our parallelogram conjectures. So these would also be congruent. And then a cyclic quadrilateral, so a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, um, the opposite angles are supplementary. So these congruent angles are also supplementary. That means that they both must be 90 degrees, right? If we know that two congruent angles add up to 180, then we just divide 180 in half and both of them have to be 90. If that's true for both these um, angles O and D, then it would be true for G and L. And then we would have four right angles. Four right angles is a rectangle. So let's write that in a columns proof. So we're gonna say first that angle G and angle L are congruent. And along that same line, O and D are congruent. And we said that is um, parallelogram opposite angles conjecture. So we might label this as one and both of these are one. Oh, I suppose what I forgot in the very beginning was that a parallelogram is inscribed in the circle. So parallelogram G-O-L-D is inscribed in circle Y. That should really be your first one and that should be given. So after we say that parallelogram opposite angles are congruent, then we are also going to say that G and L are supplementary. and that O and D are supplementary. And because they're the same reason, um, often in the column proof, I'll write them on the same line and just give one reasoning for, the, for both of them. And that's from cyclic quadrilateral conjecture. And then we might write that angle G and angle L are 90 degrees and angle O and angle D are 90 degrees. And that would be because if angles are congruent, and supplementary, they must be 90 degrees. So um, if they're 90 degrees, they are right angles. So you might have a step that say that they're right angles, but I think that um, this is reason enough to say that they're 90 degrees. So our last one is that G-O-L-D is a rectangle. Definition of a rectangle, all four angles are 90 degrees. So again, I should have had up here um, the givens. So my givens should have gone up here as um, G-O-L-D is a parallelogram inside circle Y. Okay, so that's what um, you will have on your homework.
and let's look at our algebra review. So how do we find, if we have the vertices of a triangle, we could plot them on a coordinate grid. How would we find the circumcenter? Before, when we were finding the circumcenter, we were constructing the perpendicular bisectors of the sides. Um, so if we did that on the coordinate grid, we could estimate where they fell on the coordinate points, or we could use algebra to find the exact point that we need. So here's our example. We have triangle BOP. B is at 2, negative 4, O is at 2, 4, and P is at 6, 8. So where do we start in trying to get our circumcenter? Well, we need the midpoints so that we can find um, the perpendicular bisector, bisector meaning dividing that in half. So we need the midpoints of the sides, and then we need to find the line that is perpendicular to the line connecting the sides. For example, if we start with OB, we can find the slope of this line. Then we could find the slope of a line that's perpendicular. We could also then find the midpoint. And from that midpoint, we can draw the perpendicular line. Draw or calculate it in our case. So we're going to start with OB. And I'm going to find the slope first. If any of these things you can't remember, we have done algebra reviews on finding the slope, finding perpendicular lines, and finding midpoints. So you can go back and look at those um, if you are confused. So our slope is going to be the change in y over the change in x. With o and b, I'm going to take 4, this one, minus the negative 4. And then I'll take the x's as 2 minus a negative two, sorry, this is a negative two. It kind of cut off on this line, negative two minus two. So four minus a negative is going to give me a positive. So four plus four will be eight. And then negative two and negative two is gonna be a minus four. I'm gonna reduce this to a negative two. So that's the slope of OB, so perpendicular to OB, the slope would be the negative reciprocal. So the reciprocal is 1 half. It's already negative, so it would be positive. So this is going to be the slope that we'll use to find the perpendicular bisector. Next, we need to find the midpoint so we know what point to start that um, perpendicular line. The midpoint of OB. Our midpoint is just the average between the two. So we just take the average of the x's, which would be um, 2 and a negative 2 divided by 2. And that's going to be our x-coordinate. So sometimes I just go ahead and write it in a big spot where the coordinate would be. And then the y's, the average of the y's, we have 4 and we have negative 4 divided by 2. Well, 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 over 2 is just 0. 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 over 2 is just 0. So our midpoint is actually the origin. And then we need to draw a line or calculate the point, the line equation that goes through the origin and has a slope of 1 half. So if I want to draw it on there, I go up 1 and over 2, I could draw that line. So it's going to be here. Um, but I can also calculate it, right? Um, we're going to say that y equals mx plus b. I'm going to come right over here, squeeze it in this spot. y equals mx plus b. I don't know what b is, but I do know m. I said that that has to be 1 half right here. That's our perpendicular line. So I know that this is 1 half. And I can plug in my x and my y as the point that I was that I found, 0, 0. So 0 for y and 0 for x. And now I only have one variable, which is b, and I can solve for b. In this case, it happens to be 0 equals 0 plus b. So b has to be 0. 
Now I'm going to go back to my equation and I'm going to put in the M and the B and I'm going to leave the X and the Y because that's how we write the equation of a line. So 1 half X plus 0, so I'm not going to write the plus 0. So this is the formula or the equation of the line that's perpendicular to OB. So this perpendicular bisector for the side OB is this equation right here. Now we have to get a second one and then we'll figure out where those intersect. So if I do OP and find the perpendicular bisector of OP, maybe it's here-ish, then this point will be my circumcenter. It's where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. I only have to do two because I could do BP and it should intersect at that same place. So you really only have to do two lines of any of the three possible. So you could do the line, the perpendicular bisector to BP um, uh, if you wanted to do that one instead. Let's find the perpendicular bisector to OP. So we're gonna start with OP slope. So O was negative two, negative four. I'm sorry, negative two, positive four. And P is six, eight. So the slope of OP, that's my change in Ys. So I'm gonna start with the eight and subtract the four, my change in Ys over my change in Xs. Start with the six and subtract the negative two. Eight minus four is four. Six minus a negative two is gonna be plus, so it will be eight. So my slope right here is one half. That means the slope that's perpendicular to OP will be the negative reciprocal. This is positive, so I know that this one's negative. The reciprocal of one half would be two. If you're paying attention, you'll see that yes, this happens to be a right triangle. OP is perpendicular to OB. Now we're gonna find the midpoint so that we know where the line should start from. So remember the midpoint is just the average of the X's and the average of the Y's. So negative two plus six over two and four plus eight over two. So four over two, which is two and 12 over two, which is six. So now we need an equation of a line that has a slope of negative two and it goes to the point two, six. I again write my y equals mx plus b. And I substitute in the things that I know. Since I don't know b and I need that for the equation, I'm gonna have to solve for it. I'm gonna substitute in an x and a y and an m. So six is equal to, I'm sorry, two is my, well, I'll do negative two. Negative two is my slope and my x is a positive two. So I have six is equal to negative four plus B. If I add four, I get that B is 10. Now I can go and make my equation of Y equals negative two X plus 10. Now I want the intersection point of this perpendicular bisector with the other one that we found, which was y equals one half x from our last page. So I have a system of equations and I need to solve for x and y. Um, in this case, I feel like the easiest thing is to substitute this one half x in for y in this equation right here. So one half x is equal to negative two x plus 10. Remember, there are other methods to solving systems of equations. I'm choosing to use the substitution method. I am going to add a 2x to this side. So now I have 2 and a half x, or if I want to make it all one fraction, I would say that this is 4 halves plus 1 half, so I have 5 halves x. 
is equal to 10. To get x by itself, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 5. When I multiply by 2 over 5 on this side, it becomes 1. So I just have x. Over here, the 10 and the 5 will um, reduce a little bit and make this 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. Now the last thing I have to do is find what y is. I can use either equation to plug in 4 for my x. I'm going to choose this one. It's just a little bit shorter. So y is equal to 1 half times 4, which means y is equal to 2. So my point of intersection, I'm going to draw my triangle. When I draw this perpendicular bisector, which was y equals 1 half x, and I draw this perpendicular bisector, sorry, I'm not drawing very straight, um, which is y equals negative 2x plus 10. They intersect about here. If I had drawn them really well, it should have actually intersected on the last line of BP. But it's at this point, 4, 2 is the coordinate point of my circumcenter. So you will have a few algebra review problems in your homework as well, where you will be finding the circumcenter of different triangles.